Man, this is lifestyles of the poor and unfucking fortunate. But I tell you what, but 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 bitch, we got these. All right, so I'm here with Leroy Biggs and Stoner, and we're gonna basically kind of talk about, like we briefed on in Stoner's part of the interview, of his interview where he worked with a lot of different artists. We're gonna talk about how y'all got linked up, and then kind of got what y'all worked on, what y'all got coming up. So do y'all want to kind of touch on how y'all linked up, how y'all met each other or anything? Yeah, I met him, uh, there's this, uh, homosexual nightclub off, uh, Omaha Joe called Peckers. And, uh, he said the tenders were great. No, I'm fucking sandwich. Sandwich. <laughs> sandwich. Oh, not the app. Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'll tell it. Oh. <laughs> Ryan just begged me to work with this guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you had your version that was oh, his <laughs> okay he came in the studio all googly eyed eager to work and Ryan said please do an album for this guy and I said who the, who's this guy you know what I mean yeah and uh it was Leroy Biggs he'll pay for that but yeah <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's kind of how it happened but you know he hadn't uh I don't th- had you ever recorded before that? I, mean, I know maybe you like did like a freestyle thing or two maybe prior to that. But I'd, I'd never been in a studio. Yeah, yeah. So he was uh, green. Yeah. So the long story short, basically what he said was a fucking lie or fabricated, I should say. Okay. Uh, I was going to community college at the time, and uh, Ryan had always knew it. Like I would freestyle, I'd battle rap and shit like that. Well, he's like, "Hey, motherfucker, you ready to record an album?" And I said, yeah, well, I went to his house that night. Uh, we chilled, smoked. Uh, I think we actually wrote to a 6 9 beat. I okay. think we, I think it was yeah. before the snitch case or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the next day, uh, I woke up and we went to Stoner Studio and uh, we recorded that, uh, I guess it'd be a remix. We recorded that remix and... Uh, Stoner fucking, uh, I think I had a session two days after that. And we started going like two times a week or something like that. And, uh, I mean, Stoner taught me how to record. <laughs> yeah. Well, because like at first you, uh, he would just rap all the way through the tracks. Yeah. yeah. Remember? Mm-hmm. Just kind of straight through. Remember? I remember. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I, could, I didn't know how to do hooks because a lot of you motherfucking rappers, you know, y'all write everything. Daddy came in there prepared with noggin okay and uh, right yeah yeah you're right and mostly right. it was like even the raps though were like more of like battle raps yeah you know what i'm saying they weren't really like like song raps right that right. makes any sense not really structured it was just bars basically yeah just yeah. bars exactly yeah, yeah. and so we're just like, all right and we just kind of was like you know start from scratch be like okay this is where you got to break things up this is where you got to think of a hook write a hook and at first i think the first couple of hooks were kind of rappy and then he started you know experimenting with doing some melodic things and right and uh making it more of a song you know well and two at the time like uh you know fuck i can't give any reference to it but you were busy bro like, y'all were doing a lot of shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm trying to remember what we were doing during that time, but it was, was it 2019 like, was the first record? First album? Yeah. 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 Um, and so, Doug, I mean, uh, Stoner produced that entire first, you produced that entire first album, right? Everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything. Album number one. Yeah. We need to do a Cold Ass Honky remix. That was the best song, wasn't it? Hashtag. <laughs> yeah, we should do a remix for that. That's a yeah, that's a dope. That's, that'd probably be my favorite one on that record. That, that's a, that's a dope record for that being your first project, bro. Compared to a lot of artists, first project, including mine, leaps and bounds better than what I did when I first started. And I had been writing for years. Yeah, I remember too. There was a good batch of songs where, like, let's say we we recorded the song, we moved on to another one, and moved on to another one, and then he was getting better each time. Mm-hmm. So then we had so then. You're like, hey, can I please, please, please redo yeah. the first one? So we actually ended up like recording these songs probably like two or three times. Yeah, just a bit. Because well, by was, the time he would, he would be getting better and get more comfortable, you know, because that's yeah. really all it takes is like just getting comfortable, right? Being in front of a microphone and 
So we would re-record the songs. So some of those songs we had really done a couple of times over until we felt like they were, you know, feeling good. Yeah. How did you feel as far as it being your first record and kind of not really knowing a lot about what you were doing other than you knew you could rap? Um. Well, so uh, as someone that, you know, spent his whole life in Middle Tennessee, like when Ryan blew up, we knew he was doing good, but we didn't really, you know, it's just one of those things. Like, I see this guy every day. Yeah. Um, you know, he's he's still the same motherfucker I know. He ain't yeah. changed. Well, like, I knew uh, Stone as T. Stoner from right. his previous work with Jelly Roll. Yeah. And, I mean, growing up on Pond Creek in West Nashville, like, dude, that's what we bump and shit. Well, uh, I mean, dude, I was in awe. And don't let this go to your fucking ego. Keep going, keep going. Uh, I was in awe was for, fan. for probably the first four months or so because, like, I mean, I just, like, I know of this guy. And then the way him and Ryan were going back and forth, it was really an eye-opener just to see how far Ryan had gotten. Because, I mean, fuck, dude, like, he was... Uh, I mean, fuck, dude. We uh, we considered T Stoner the fucking you know like a Dr. Dre of all the white trash motherfuckers. I mean, like <laughs> it was. So I was in all, and now I realize, you know, I am way cooler. Like you know, like <laughs> it's all smoke and mirrors now. But <laughs> the first five months he catfished me. I was really in all, and uh. Are you in love now? Hmm? Are you in love now? I mean, I wouldn't say me. <laughs> Said it all, I think. And biting your fingers. Stop. <laughs> hey, yeah, stop. But, uh, yeah, I uh, I didn't know. And another thing, too, like, as far as uh, what the fuck ever Chad said, for y'all that don't know, he's washing his hands or whatever. <laughs> Fucking, um, I didn't know what I was doing. So, like, the whole time, like, the reason I was developing so quick is because Sonar was like literally having to teach me shit and then like give me the definition of shit. Well, bro, what makes that sound better is a a, a dub. We'll go through. Well, what's a dub? Well, a dub is. All right, hey man, now we're gonna do the in and outs. What the fuck is that? Yep. Well, it's like the rhyming words, you know, and like yep. quite literally had to build fucking no knowledge out of scratch, and I mean. It just, uh, I don't feel like, I feel like if I had started anywhere else, the story may have been different. For sure. Well, that's what I was telling you, bro. For somebody's, for somebody to listen to your first album and to not know any of that and for it to be as good as it was for you to not have that knowledge. And you were just kind of like raw talent that he was trying to help mold into an artist. Basically right. that shit's a really good record for somebody that's, if, if it's your first, not only your first album, it was your first time recording music, bro. Right. That's crazy to think yeah. about. Yeah, I mean, true, it, true. It, especially where you're at now, only two years later. You know what I'm saying? Like how much better you've gotten to where you're writing stuff and you're writing hooks and you're harmonizing and you, you know structure. and that's, that's a long way to come in a short span. That's growth. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Hashtag growth. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all did the first record, right? Yeah. And then... After that first record, you were on, um, uh, we spoke about it, he was on the... The end? Well, y'all did that, y'all did that track, you and Chucky V did that song, right? After the first album. Yeah. And then you was also on the Stone Baby Sounds compilation. Of course. Yeah. Of course I was. With Lil White and Jelly. Of course Jimmy I B. was, right? <laughs> yeah, no, he, uh, he called me, and I can't remember what you said, it was, he's like... He's like, dude, I got you a Christmas present. I think it was Christmas. I got you a Christmas present. <laughs> and, like, you got to understand, like, so fast forward real quick. Me and Stone ganged together. So when mm -hmm. I was working on album Dose and shit like that, like, we was talking, you know, fucking two or three times a week, fucking hanging out and shit. Like, dude bought me a fucking uh, headset. Yeah. Because my headset was shitty. He'd talk shit, talk <laughs> shit, but... He bought me a headset. Well, yeah. he hit me up, and that was just random, uh, random uh, anecdote for you. <laughs> uh, anyways, he calls me. He's like, uh, "Hey, man, I got a uh, Christmas present for you. Can you come to the studio Thursday?" 
And, dude, I mean, it's like, what the fuck? I mean, it was going through yeah. my head. And I think the way it went, I was like, tell me. He's like, you'll see when you get here. You'll see when you get here. Mm-hmm. And he's like, uh, I need you to do a verse for me. And then it was like, okay, you know, I'm willing to work. But, you know, that's not a present. That's work. Why am, you know. How dare well, you? Well, the opportunity was. How the dare gift. you catch me? <laughs> well, it was just the perfect song. But, yeah. And then, like, sure. like I mean, going back, like, I already knew who he was. He knew, like, hey, man, this motherfucker grew up listening to Jelly. This motherfucker grew up listening to Lil White. It was, like, he said, the fucking opportunity. Like, it's just, it just comes to show the dynamic of, like, uh, not only who he is, but our fucking friendship. Yeah. Because we weren't working at the time. I was going to say, well, volume two was you and Dub's project, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so then you, that was the first y'all had worked since the Chucky record? Album Dose, not volume two. Say it. Album Dose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first time y'all had worked on music since this, the single you and Chucky put out, yeah. the end, right? Mm-hmm. So, and, and it's totally different vibe from what you had done on your first two records. Exactly. Well, and two, it was one of those things, like, when he came here, when I came here and he told me that, I wrote the verse there, here, mm-hmm. and we recorded it. It was uh, me, him, and uh, Moses was here, uh, Brandon was here. I don't want to mix up Moses with Moses. <laughs> don't want to disrespect <laughs> nobody. Yeah. My engineer. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, and two, I think it, uh, him letting me be a part of that, which, uh, thank you, uh, I mean, fuck, dude, we, half of this solo project I have coming up is him, and the reason we got back in the saddle was he saw how dope your boy dropped it. I mean, it was like five minutes. It was like, fuck a beat. Stone, just turn off the head. Let me, let me, you know, spit some shit, and it fit perfect. And so now that, we can kind of jump now, that brings us to what the, the new album that you're working on, it's half produced by him and half produced by Dub3030. Mm-hmm. And y'all have already heard, if you're watching the interviews, Out the Window is, is a stoner produced track, correct? Gang. So that's already out on Leroy's YouTube and it's up on all streaming platforms. But Remix coming soon. Yeah, for sure. Do you want to get some in, friends? Do you want to get into the portion of the new record that you and him have? At least just kind of briefly talk about it. Well, about, what, about what's upcoming, like y'all So well. At first, the music I was doing with Stone was going to be its own project. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it just so happened we were on the same page with, like, distribution and stuff like that, which, I mean, it's just, at this point, it's, you know, like, it's got to be feasible to work anymore. Like, we can, like, we're friends and stuff, but, like, he can only do so much for me before, you know, we had to make it work and shit. Mm -hmm. Well... So that's why half of the albums produced by Stone Stone was going. We were going to have our own project, right? Uh, but as far as moving forward, man, uh, you know, I'm I think highly of uh, the single idea of just dropping singles and Absolutely. marketing singles. And yeah. <laughs> uh, Stone told me he, you know, he felt the same way about it. So uh, yeah, I thought it would be advantageous for him to combine what he had with. Dub yeah. and, and my stuff, you know, because I think you only had this about the same amount of songs with him that you did with me. Mm-hmm. So instead of like two separate EPs and having to focus on pushing them at different times, yeah, right. or kind of confusing. Yeah. Dub's a really solid producer, so I thought, well, it would be pretty dope. Yeah. So right. that's why I suggested, why don't you just put it together and that's your album, you know? Because yeah. I mean? yeah. it's well, it won't feel scattered, you know, it's mm-hmm. two producers, but and you won't be having to sit on that other seven for another exactly, three exactly. Well, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's part of that especially too. as fast as you're working yeah. yeah well and two one thing I liked about it like the thing I was so excited about me and Dove stuff was you know it's just like all of the each track sounded different yeah well then like jump over to what me and Stone have that shit sounds completely fucking different right. from what me and Dove have yeah. and so it's just like I'm not you know it's not bland no, not at all. That's no. the simplest way I can put it. Yeah. Like, there's nothing about this project is fucking. Bl- Every track stands on its own. Yeah. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. I just, I mean, I want to press play on it right now. Fuck downloading. Watch this play, <laughs> boy. <laughs> but so yeah, man. So that that that's dope, and it, and it and it works out too. And it was such a dope idea of his to do that because 
you did the first one with him and the second one with Dub, so why not just do the third combined with the two that you already worked with previously? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it, it makes it makes sense. It kind of just worked itself out that way. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So y'all stay tuned for that one. Um, he's looking to drop. You're trying to drop probably like late October, hopefully. Potentially. Thanks, Chad. Well, we yeah. can cut it out. No, no, I'm fucking with you. Keep that in. You keep that in. Because <laughs> you, I know you had mentioned that album Dose had dropped October 23rd. It, yeah, it'd be year. like a year. So it'd be like a year after. Like, yeah. 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 So you've you've dropped the Twang and Round EP in August. We're dropping Bad Habits in September, and then you drop the solo project in October, and you've got album, oh, album, sorry. album in yeah. three months. You've got plenty of stuff to. They to all stand with. on their own. Yeah. You know what I mean? They all like. Yeah. It's just uh And another thing that goes back before, uh, just about working uh, on the singles and stuff. Like, I talk about the growth and development. Each hook I'm doing, like. As far as I'm concerned, I think I'm developing, and like I mean, it's like I don't, I don't know. Just it's different sounding beats, dude. The beats I'm hearing now, you know, fucking. And as somebody that's heard the entire record, he's not, he's right. not exaggerating. Like every all, every song is is a banger, but it's its own vibe. Like all the stuff him and Stoner have are not the same. It's not. It's all different vibes. Yeah. Just like him and Dubs is all different vibes. So So whenever you hear Stone Baby sounds, you just assume Daddy. <laughs> we appreciate y'all sitting down with us, man. We look forward to it. I know everybody else is looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Biggs, I appreciate you, Bubba. Stoner, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Chat Arms TV. <laughs> <laughs>